Hey everybody, welcome to the McCall Center's Mini Art Labs. My name is Paul Farmer. I am a local artist here in Charlotte, and also I'm a art professor at Winthrop University, Central Piedmont Community College, and Rowan Cabarrus Community College. What we're gonna work on today here is we're going to be collaging barn quilt designs. And I'm excited about this project. It's an easy project to do, and it's really great for all skill levels, uh, whether you are a beginning youngster or uh, an experienced artist. Um, really, it's all about how much you want to challenge yourself. Okay, so the supplies you're gonna need for this project, you're gonna need glue sticks, a pair of scissors. You're going to need some collaging material. So I have a bunch of scraps of green that I'm gonna to use today and some scraps of blue. Uh, what's really cool about this project is it's meant to be for collaging, uh, but again, whatever skill level you're at is fine. If you just want to use construction paper for this um, to make it easier on yourself, you can use construction paper. You can go to the art store and use some uh, decorative craft paper. So whatever you want to use for this is really just fine. I'm going to be collaging today. And so before you begin, we have some templates. We have some PDF templates that you'll have to scroll down on your screen. There are some PDF file links. Uh, I put six or so up there and I wrote in the title, they vary from easy to hard. So I chose uh, a moderate difficulty level um, to do for the purpose of this demonstration. Uh, there's some easy ones for kids that are pretty simple to do, and then there's some complex patterns with lots of colors. Uh, today, I'm gonna be doing one with two colors. So if you have whatever number of colors that you have, you wanna multiply that by two to print out. So I am doing two colors and I printed it out four times. So here you might want to pause the video and go ahead and pick your template and print it out. Uh, if you don't have a printer, maybe you can uh, go over to your neighbors and uh, borrow it. Okay, so now we're ready to begin. And what I do is, before I throw out magazines or any other kind of illustrative book, uh, I might cut out some pieces from it. And so I've got some green and some blue here today. Um, whatever colors you choose is fine. Um, you do want them to be different, right? You can see here from my examples, um, I chose groups of yellow, groups of green, and groups of blue here. This is the um, five star quilt pattern. Or sorry, wait, I can't count. The eight star quilt pattern. And so you can kind of see here where we're gonna be going with this. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your printouts you're gonna flip it upside down. Uh, to make life easier on myself, because I don't really need all this paper, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that away. Don't need it. Don't wanna waste my collage material on that. So this is called Lincoln's Platform, and um, the reason why this was a popular quilt pattern um, in the great westward movement, those pioneering days, is during the Civil War, President Lincoln actually signed the Homestead Act of 1872, um, which resulted in millions of acres of federal government uh, being offered for homesteading. And so anyways, there should be a link to um, the website that I found. And I actually constructed these templates myself on Adobe Illustrator. Um, and, but they're all based off the quilt designs that I saw there. So you're gonna take your template and you're gonna turn it upside down. Pretty simple. And I'm now gonna take one of my colors. And I've got so much here, I need to find the ones that I really want. Uh, 
Okay, and now I have my glue stick and I'm ready to go. And so you're gonna to wanna to go over the edges. Go ahead and go past those borders. It'll look a lot nicer when you cut it up. You might wanna have an extra piece of paper handy to do this on top of, uh, in case you're working on the kitchen table or wherever, just to keep the glue off the table. If you end up putting a color that you don't like down, all you gotta do is cover it up. Now I'm gonna move on to my second color. Again, I'm just gonna cut this away. That turn it upside down, and I'm going to get my second color out. I've chosen these nice greens, I've got a lot of them, and some of these I don't want to use because they're so different than the other ones.
And okay, so now I have my two colors ready. You may want to pause the video here and catch up uh, if you need to. Okay, so here comes the fun part. So now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to cut across the lines, uh, pretty easy. Again, um, the difficulty level uh, of this project is of your choosing. Uh, my pattern here is, is a bit more complex than others. I really enjoy activities like this. Uh, I tend to be a very serious artist and um, Sometimes it's nice to have a project like this that I can kind of shut off my thinking brain and just, uh, it's almost a, a meditative practice for me. Although you might not want to shut off your thinking brain when you're using scissors. So maybe after you cut these up, then you can shut off your thinking. Now you're gonna end up putting this together like a puzzle. So you do wanna to try to do as good a job as you can, really staying on those lines so that all the pieces fit together when you're done. If it doesn't fit together 100% perfectly, that is okay, everything will be all right. See, I made a little mistake there. It'll all fit together somehow. Maybe it'll be uh, like one of Bob Ross's happy accidents. The tip I may have left out is you might want to wash your hands after you're done gluing. My fingers are a bit sticky right now. Some of the collage pieces are sticking to them and coming off. That is not a big deal. We can just glue them back on after we've put everything together. Okay, so I have cut off all of my blue. To make life easier on myself, I'm going to go ahead and split up the A's and B's. This will save me a little bit of time and confusion later. Okay, so I'm done with blue, and now I'm going to repeat the same process with green. Okay, so now I'm done with green, just like before. I'm going to go ahead and split up my piles here between A and B. Okay, so now I have four piles, and so what I want to do is I want to now divide this in half. So I'm going to pick one letter from one color and then the other letter from the other color. So I'm going to pick the A's from the green and the B's from the blue. I'm going to set these aside for later. Uh, if you are paying attention, you might notice that you're now going to have enough colors to actually construct two, not one just like I had done here. So you can do one, and if you enjoyed it, go ahead and put together the second one. You've already done most of the work. <clears throat> okay, so let me double check here. Okay, I've got blue and green. 
And I'm pretty much going to start in the middle and work my way outwards. And that way, if the pieces don't quite fit together, um, I can kind of improvise. Whereas if you work outside in, there might not be as much room for improvisation. So I recommend starting from the inside and working your way out. The good thing about glue sticks is it doesn't dry right away, so you got a little bit of time to play with it if you don't get it in the exact right spot. So don't be scared to play with it a little bit. This part's kind of fun. It's like an easy puzzle to put together. A little piece coming up. Not a big deal. Just move it back in.
Okay, and we are almost finished. Last but not least, I'm gonna cut out the edges. Do whatever feels comfortable to you here. I'm gonna actually turn it over and look at the lines on the back sheet of the paper. Uh, that's really not necessary. Um, but I'm a bit of a neat freak, so I'm gonna do it this way so I can keep that nice square. Okay, and there you have it. Here's our barn quilt pattern. And like I said before, if you enjoyed this, you can now put together another one using your leftover scraps from your other A's and B's. So I hope you enjoyed this. And like I was saying, there's a link down below, which should have uh, a link to the National Park Service and a really nice article about uh, the pioneers who went out west and the quilt patterns that they liked to use. Okay, thanks everybody for joining me. That concludes our barn quilt collage session. I hope you enjoyed it. I am Paul Farmer Artist on Instagram if you care to follow me and see what other collages and shenanigans I'm up to. Uh, I hope to see you there. Bye everybody.